Last fall, I got an email from my cousin telling me that he was being transferred to a strategic command post in Nebraska, and he couldn't wait to get out there and get settled in, because our farm was only about three hours from there. You see, my cousin Kevin is one of the best leaders I've ever known, and I've had several in my life. He's earned the rank of lieutenant colonel by leading his men into battle more times than many could even imagine, but it come at a price. After over 24 years of service, and nearly a decade of that being deployed, he's missed a lot of time with his kids. So this was a no-brainer for me to seize the opportunity and invite him and his kids down for the Missouri youth season. He ended up bringing his daughter Lauren, who was 12 years old, after all these years, I've really never met until now. Matter of fact, the last time I saw her, I think she was only three or four years old. She's very goal-driven and focused on outdoing her older and younger brothers and hopes of killing her first turkey so I could actually feel the envy just building back in Nebraska where her brothers were. As we set out on the first morning hunt, it was cold. It was only 25 degrees and the birds weren't very vocal. However, the deer, on the other hand... They gave us a little bit of entertainment by walking into our decoy spread. Lauren had so many questions that morning, and I was doing my best to try and keep up with them, and as well as teach her how to use a call. Kevin and I were both trying to show her the difference between a yelp, cluck, and purr on the call, and she took that box call and went to town on it. But as the morning kind of went on, the action slowed down. So we got out of the blind and started to hunt our way back to camp to get some breakfast, and we were stopping and calling every 30 or 40 yards in hopes of getting the attention of a gobbler. And sure enough, that's exactly what happened. We struck a gobbler up, and so we ran and got set up, and we were calling him in. He was coming right to our location. But unfortunately, there was a gravel road that he had to pass in order to get to us. And just about the same time that he was getting ready to pass that road, a truck drove down and pushed in the opposite direction, and we never saw him again. In Missouri, during the normal season... We can't hunt past 1 p.m. But thankfully, the conservation department allows the youth hunters to hunt from sunup till sundown. And we took advantage of that. After finally getting settled into the blind and getting the decoys set up in the high winds, Lauren's natural curiosity wanted to learn a little bit about my slate call. So I showed her a couple of ways that she could do some simple calls and and five minutes later, she was working that slate call like a pro and had a group of jakes come right into the decoys. It was on after that. After she shot that Jake, she had a lot of questions as to why is a bird flopping? Is he alive or is he okay? Typical questions on a first turkey hunter. We were all super proud of her, especially her dad.
He flopped a little bit too. <laughs> one shot, one kill. Never miss, never will. It was a great shot. A great shot. It was a great hunt. I could see it in Kevin's eyes, that feeling of accomplishment. The pride that he had in her. I was just happy that I could bring the two of them together after nearly a decade of separation. You know, one thing I learned about her is she's very goal-driven. She, if she sets her goals on something, she's going to accomplish it. She's daddy's girl, and nothing can change that. I have filmed several first hunts, and they never get old. Introducing youth into our sport of hunting should be a requirement and a responsibility of every single hunter afield. When you teach a youth about the outdoors, you will not only teach them the same passion that we all share, but you'll become a better sportsman for it. It will change your perspective for the better, the time you spend with a youth are memories that you both will enjoy forever.